Hello family, my name is Chris, I am your home gamer dad, and for those of you that follow my channel and know how much I am obsessed with the game Final Girl, this video should be absolutely no surprise to you as to why I am making it. I have season one, I have season two, the new stuff is available right now on Kickstarter, so let me explain to you why I backed Final Girl Series 3. So there are a million reasons why I backed Final Girl Series 3, but ultimately it's because I love this game. I love Final Girl. I regret missing the first Kickstarter because I was looking at it and I wasn't quite sure. I hemmed, I hawed, I was like, ah, I don't know if I should get it. And then once people started getting their copies and doing playthroughs and actually showing what the game was about, I was like, oh man, I missed such a great game. And then Series 2 was released on Kickstarter with the option to get everything from Series 1. So I just went all in crazy on everything that this game has to offer and was even better about that point is this came earlier than this so I was able to play all of series one before series two came it was that is besides the point right now because series three is currently available on kickstarter and you need to go check it out and here is why so as you can see from here there is a lot a lot to this series we have both of those, uh, I think they were called franchise boxes uh, before. I think they're called Ultimate Collections right now because they just have all of the things packaged in there with them. So it's like every single one of these features five feature films. And the way that the game works, if you're new to Final Girl and you're not really too sure about it, whatever, and this happens to be the first video you watch about it, uh, first things first, I would say, definitely go check out uh, some of my playthroughs on this afterwards just so you can get a good idea of how the game works and like how it interacts with each other. But also, each one of the games, you need a feature film. And that comes with two Final Girls, one killer, and one location. Right out of the box, you're also going to need uh, a core set in order to play everything. So you need a core set and at least one feature film. From there, the more feature films you buy, the more interactions and changing and swapping around of stuff you can do. Because you can take feature film uh, killers from one and then put them in a location from another, taking a final girl from a third one. And it's just so many different ways that this game can interact and combine together into different forms and you can create your own horror themed game. This is a single player horror themed experience. See right down here, the immensely thematic and highly variable horror game returns for series three. Yes, highly variable because everything can just swap around and create all these different combinations to them. It's crazy. See, so here's an example of one of the boxes and they're called the ultimate box this time because it just comes with everything. Everything. You know, you get the box and you get uh, the feature films that come with it. You get the special boxes in them that have uh, whatever the special features were for that particular series. Usually a vignette is in there as well, which is like a killer only box, but it's very small and usually deals with like a lot of little creatures. <laughs> I'm recording this to the point where the vignette hasn't been revealed yet for this one, but I'll talk about that when I get down there. Uh, but otherwise that, yeah, see, so... You got yourself one, two, three, four, five pieces here. Um, well, it looks like there's more stuff within uh, this box than I remember. Uh, five feature films, storage boxes, which are always great, a ton of minis. Uh, and you can't forget the gruesome death books either. This makes your game uh, a little bit more immersive because each one of these books features a different killer. And as you flip through it, it features uh, different locations. So you open it up to a killer, you find the location that you're in, and then you see what happen that turn through a tarot card like the name of a tarot card that caused that particular victim to bite the dust and there's a little blurb under there about how the killer walks in and actually kills the person and it's really cool that way because you're able to be like all right so rather than up oh, killer walks in up oh, victim dies move on you can read it and get an idea of like oh no johnny walked in he didn't see where he was going the killer stalked him from the shadows and before he knew it smack in the side of the head with a sledgehammer this is the vignette that I was talking about. It's a much smaller box, but there's plenty packed into it. And then, of course, the lore and scenario book. Series 1 and Series 2 have lore and scenario books. I believe Season 3, it's part of it, or we're going to unlock it soon. Something, something, it's, it should be coming for Series 3. You can't, you can't have a Final Girl without the lore and scenario book at this point, because the lore book kind of gives you a much better background on each one of the killers that you're going up against. And then the scenario book is something that you can play and, like, go through, like, a mini movie of sorts. Brief overview on exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to this whole uh, feature film system. So 
Each one of the boxes has the cover that's double-sided. One is the killer, one is the location. So this is Camp Happy Trails, but then you can take uh, Nightmare on Fright Street and put Dr. Fright on Camp Happy Trails. Or you finish that, you can take away Camp Happy Trails and you could put the uh, him in his uh, Maple Lane area. Or Hans could be here instead of Maple Lane. So the more feature films you have, the more killer and location combinations you're going to get. So if you have all 15, that's 225 possible combinations you can get, not including the vignettes, by the way, which should add another 15 to that. No, it'd be more than that. Uh, be adding another 45 to that because each vignette could go to uh, one of the 15 locations. So you got so much customization, so much replayability to this. Uh, otherwise that, why don't we just go ahead and start talking about the new feature films for Series 3 because they're really what the stars are of this particular uh, show off for the Kickstarter. What I like is that a lot of these feature films nowadays are taking direct inspiration from movies. You can see a lot of them in previous ones. You saw The Thing, you saw Alien, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, the Friday the 13th. You know, you see where those inspirations come from. Here, they're just very much in your face and they're not making any bones about it. And I'm actually extremely appreciative of that because it's like, I know what that is. Awesome. So what we have right here is the Terminator. And I'm going to be honest with you, the first Terminator movie is definitely more horror and thriller-like, whereas Terminator 2 is more action. I, I felt the same way with the Alien saga as well. Alien 1 was scary. Alien 2 was tense, but it was more action-oriented. So this is going to be based more on uh, Terminator 1 as we have the killer from tomorrow, the hunter, which is this guy right here, and then the sunny days ball is the location. A cyborg from the future has come back in time on a mission to destroy some kind, someone they called the savior. Unfortunately, he's kind of a brat. Da, da, da. The Mark V hunter will be your first challenge. You'll have to destroy it uh, before the Mark X hunter arrives. Uh, will you rebuild the Mark V to assist you against a Mark X? or go at it, so that's really cool. So then you're gonna have a killer come in, he's probably not gonna be as strong as the one you're gonna find later, but if you defeat him, I, I'm really curious on how that's gonna work to be able to reprogram it, to work with you in order to take down the other guy that comes at you. Uh, and this is again, robot, and then the Mark 10 that comes at you is like that liquid metal. So that's, I can't wait to see the art for these, they're gonna be so awesome. As far as the mall, newly built mall is the place to be, all new two-story shopping mall. I'm from New Jersey. I am a big fan of malls. I've been around malls my entire life. This is this is definitely aging itself into what? The, the 80s, the 70s, or the 80s, or whatever, where they're like, wow, we got two floors in this mall? That's amazing. Uh, such, a, such an amazing thing, because it would be a real shame if people got attacked and thrown through the wall, uh, through the walls of stores or tossed from the second store ballot alley. Amazing. Oh, great. Uh, we don't have a map yet, which is going to be awesome. I want to see how it is. So there's probably some verticality to it. And then all of the different cards and everything, savior cards, you know, we're going to need that, something to lead our savior around. I feel like this may have like a poltergeist thing where we got to get the savior to safety before we take on the uh, the hunter over here. Ally cards, which is really cool. That's a new thing. Uh, an exclusive action card for it. Fantastic. And then just uh, its own dark powers, epic powers, terror cards, all this great stuff. And of course, the minis that go along with it. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm excited for all of them. This is going to be really cool. Next feature film, Hell to Pay with Razorface the Killer and the Hellscape map. Hellraiser. This is Hellraiser 100%. It's supposed to be Pinhead. It's Razorface. That's fine. This is a Cenobite or whatever they want to call it here. Doesn't really matter. This thing looks gnarly as all get out. I, again, the art on these games are amazing, each one of them. So there's illustrators uh, listed on the side here. Uh, who's the guy? From, what do we got up here? We got um, got uh, the designer and then an illustrator over here. Uh, designer, illustrator. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, you are not perfect. You, you're made to share. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. You may have shared mistakes and maybe deserve to be in the shifting hellscape. Then again, maybe you don't. Raise the face of skill. So it's like, uh, with your affection, he draws power from them. Yeah, so this is very Pinhead-like, where Pinhead, even though he was a villain in uh, Hellraiser, really all he did was he took people that were like really nasty in their life and whatever, and tortured the hell out of them in order to be able to get them to see all of the problems and all of the issues that they created while they were alive, and he fed off of all that negativity. It was insane. What a Minecraft uh, craziness of a, a movie. And then the hellscape itself is an ever-changing maze. Uh, sites will see you, draw you in, da 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 da, da you completely... So the way that the hellscape is going to work from what I've seen uh, AJ show off uh, in like brief uh, 
what is it, um, like a brief preview is you have these tiles here. There are eight tiles, I believe that is, and you're gonna use the dice, which is awesome, love custom dice, and the tiles are gonna go down on the board. So every time you play, it's gonna be in a different order. And as you play, it's going to shift around. So you're in it, you think you're gonna be able to get to the escape area, and then all of a sudden it's just gonna to move to the other side of the map or it's going to swap. Maybe it'll bring the killer closer to you, maybe it'll bring traps and other bad things to you, who the hell knows, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this is gonna be amazing. Uh, affliction cards is to be able to deal with your inner demons and everything while in the hellscape. And of course, uh, taking on Razor Face as uh, Kenzie or Christine. Who are the, the two girls up here? I missed them. Tali and Kat. Kat looks, these glasses are not doing anything good for her, but I do like how you can see the killer in the reflection. Uh, as for them, ah, so cool. I love like the shading on this. It looks like a skull face here. Uh, Kenzie looks awesome too. So there you go. That's. There are four minis in this one so far. I don't know what type of vehicle that is, but it looks like you're riding some killer horses. Um, but there you go, that is hell to pay. Next is the Falconwood Files, where you have the Slayer and then Falconwood as your location. Uh, if the <laughs> font up here didn't give it away, uh, this is a Stranger Things inspired feature film. Uh, Falconwood, of course, based off of Hawkins, get it? Falconwood. Hawkins, ha, ah, I get it. Good job, guys. Way to, way to play it off that way. And then uh, the Slayer is like the, is it the Demigorgon? Is it the Mind Flayer? Uh, I don't think it's a Vecna type creature. I'm not quite sure, but let's see. Uh, peculiar things are happening in the small town of Fountainwood. Government experiments and supernatural occurrences are happening. How do you stop a monstrosity from a parallel mirror dimension? Stranger fans out there, the upside down, right? This is the mirror. So it's everything that you would normally see, but in reverse. Again, very clever. <laughs> so it doesn't really say too much about the Slayer and what its abilities are and everything, other than it can probably bounce back and forth between the mirror location. We have Janelle and Octavia here, which are really cool, very interesting characters. Our designer and our illustrator uh, for this one. I love. I love how Janelle has the giant bow. You're in the 80s now for this one. You got the hair on, on Octavia here. You got Janelle with this giant bow. That is insane. Uh, what do we got? Mission item cards. Ooh, that's fun. Mirrored victim meeples. So I get new meeples now. Gray ones. Great. Uh, mission sheets. This is cool. Wow. And a 20, a D20, which is great. So many things on this one, like new uh, items and everything. So you may also notice that we have uh, dark powers uh, and dark finale cards and then uh, Epic Dark Power. Basically, it's gonna work exactly the same way as it did in series one and two. You're gonna have at least four and four for each one, four Dark Powers, four finales, and then an Epic Dark Power and Epic Finale for the last ones, because why not have as many bad things that you can get for your killer to go and beat you down with? Uh, and this one also has two action cards for itself. Very nice. The Merrick Murders, where we have the Tormentor and Merrick Warehouse. AJ actually designed this one, so I know he's very excited for it. And then we have the Illustrator. And basically what this one is, it's a Saw-inspired uh, one. And what I love most about this, you have like the torture uh, uh, victims and everything inside of these death traps. I mean, it says right here, maybe he's become uh, fascinated by an unorthodox killer being referred to as the Tormentor on account of her method of placing her victims, and I'm emphasizing that, uh, in death traps that they are that are escapable in theory. Why does she? Uh, why does she do this? Yada 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 yada. Because you're going after Saw on this one with Jigsaw finding people, and he puts them in these death traps in order to be able to wake them up from whatever they are doing wrong with their life. Because he's extremely judgmental, even though he never says he is, but he absolutely you know judges everybody he sees. Um, and he puts them in these traps, and they're supposed to be unescapable. Usually some type of maiming is involved or whatever. But usually when you see stuff like that between a Saw and the Collector and things like that, there's always these men that are doing it. I love that AJ made this a woman. I love that the Tormentor is a girl, and she's the one that's putting everybody into these uh, traps for who knows what reason. I, I had such a cool twist on the idea. Um, let's see, Merrick Warehouse, Mid-Sized Warehouse... Uh, fulfillment of a variety of stores, operators want to win it, and there's not too much here that you get. Uh, the management, or whoever's in charge, and the killer, can control everything, both coming in and leaving the warehouse. There is a card uh, that the Tormentor has uh, as one of her finales or whatever, where she's standing in front of uh, a bunch of TVs and looking. So I wonder if the warehouse is going to have a special feature to it in which it will... Um, 
like not really be controlled by the killer, but the killer will have some type of influence on what happens in a certain space or what things kind of pop up. Uh, victim trap cards, final girl death trap cards, that's all going to be for the tormentor. Because there's really nothing here that gives me too much about what the uh, the warehouse could possibly be. Various things, yeah, pretty much. Uh, but you do get a four left. Can't go wrong with a forklift. I love having a forklift. And then our two final girls, uh, Cassie and Mandy. Awesome. Uh, everybody's everybody's packing here. We have someone with a chainsaw, someone with an axe, and then Tormentor with a drill and a hacksaw. Because if we're going to be going off of a saw theme, why not have a tooth blade ready to go when you need to remove a limb? And now the one I am most excited for. I am a big monster fan. I love kaiju. I love monster movies. I love all this like crazy creature horror and things along that ways. This is the one that when I saw it pop up, I'm like, I need to play that as soon as possible. AJ, Van Ryder Games. Yes, I, I am full in 100%. And I'll go over that a little bit later as well for Series 3. But if you happen to get one of these early and you want to send them out to other like <laughs> channels and whatnot out there in order to show them off before everything comes out, I would love to grab an early copy or at least put my name in the hat for a possible one of this particular feature film. Let me know who I need to contact in order to really go from there. Uh, but this we have Don't Make a Sound with the Eyeless in the Town of Utopia. Now, you would think at first, okay, this is a quiet place, which you're absolutely correct. The, whoop, don't get me going anywhere. The, the Eyeless is starting to move on me. Uh, you would think with the eyeless and everything, yes, it's based off of the, the creatures that came down from space in A Quiet Place. But Utopia, Utopia has a very, very special thing as well that everyone's been asking for and they don't even realize, a lot don't realize are in it. But let's just do the first thing. Uh, Gravity Pod is just by name for what it was. Since it was an entirely alien, the pod contained a ravenous being uh, born and bend by a higher intelligence with one purpose, to clear the planet of current life so that it can be terraformed. Devoid of its eyes, the eyeless, uh, yes. Yeah. So again, these were, this is a single creature running around the planet, killing everything or whatever. It doesn't have any eyes. It runs off of sound. There's actually a cool sound mechanic for this particular uh, killer that as you move around the board, if you make too much noise, it's going to instantly be drawn to you and everything. But, but now we go to Utopia. Welcome to Utopia, jokingly called nowhere by the rest of the state's resident. Utopia uh, it's a desert town where the people are outnumbered by, well, just about anything else you can think of. Little did the residents know, but they are about to be set upon by a brood of giant sand snakes. Each as large as a tractor trailer that were nested just below the town a million years ago. Tremors! Tremors! Utopia is based off of perfection! That's exactly what this is! Everybody during the last, like, trying to make predictions for what this feature film was going to be or what, you know, to be in Series 3, a lot of people wanted Tremors. I wanted a whole load of monster stuff. I think you can do Godzilla. I think you can do The Predator. I think you can do Tremors and things along that way. This is a great one because this is the first time where you actually had, it's not really a killer, but a real major threat within the location as opposed to just a killer coming into a location and like working together to try to figure out like using what's in the location in order to be able to, to get the best one over the killer. Uh, here we go, 12 sand snake cards. This is where the worms start bursting out of the ground and this is where they do various things in order to hurt you, kill you, move you around, I guess, I don't know. Uh, a lone ear for your noisemaker and then of course a lot of the other stuff, setup cards, item cards, things along that way. Yeah, this is the one. That's the one. This is the one that I want to play with because I want to be able to take down the um, the eyeless one here. I want to avoid all of the worms uh, as I run around the desert and just have multiple threats coming at me on multiple fronts of all these giant monsters. That's if I had to do this a la carte, which I'm not because I want everything at all. That would be the one that I would get, hands down. And now for something very special and very surprising that AJ announced right after this whole thing got funded. Now this, I'm recording this at a little bit more than 24 hours after the uh, Kickstarter started. And we're almost at a million, for, like right now in terms of total funds and everything, which is awesome. Once we hit that funded, which we did in probably about 40 minutes or so, this was uh, funded, 40, 45 minutes, he revealed a surprise sixth feature film for this campaign. Now it is not tied to season three. It's not part of season three. If you get season three, you're not going to get it. You're going to have to get it separately or whatever. But 
What's really cool is the more money this campaign makes, the cheaper this feature film is going to be for everyone out there that supported uh, the Kickstarter, um, up to it being possibly free. I mean, here it is right here. It's the North Pole Nightmare. So yes, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. But this is the progression. So normally this is a $30 piece because it's gonna come with all the minis and everything like that. Uh, just for being funded, just for us having a funded Kickstarter for Final Girl Season 3, uh, series three, it's 15 bucks, automatically half off. And now as you can see, as we start moving up the chart here, it's gonna slowly but surely drop down till it's eventually free. We are over 900K right now. So now this feature film is 10 bucks. It's, it hasn't been revealed yet what it's gonna be to make it five. I feel like it's gonna be 1.5, maybe 1.75 or so. And then I feel like once we hit 3 million maybe, or 2.5 million, something along that ways, that's when it's gonna be free. So then you would just get, you would just get this feature film this year. This would come out, in theory, no promises, before Christmas 2023. This is a special feature feature film, if you really wanna go along that way. It's because it's not tied to any one of the series, which as AJ was talking about when he was showing off originally, means that it opens it up more for them to be able to do a bunch of different things at any time they want and be able to show it off rather than having to worry about putting a bunch of things together as one. Here's a big bundle, yada, yada, yada. So this is a North Pole Nightmare with Krampus as your killer and Santa's Village as your location. And of course, as you know, Krampus is Santa's evil twin. Each year, the horned devil would go out on Christmas Eve punishing the naughty kids. He was so good at his job, as was Santa, that Krampus' uh, got, uh, list got smaller because he was probably killing everybody that was naughty and smaller every year until his new targets inflicted with pain and punishment on Santa and his elves. So <laughs> Krampus is running around the North Pole killing elves. The only real special rule that I saw on here uh, that makes the, the village interesting is that each one of the victims on the board are elves, so they're not just normal people. So if you move into a space with a victim because they're super energetic elves running around all over the place, you actually lose a time. In any event, who do you play as? Cindy the elf or Mrs. Claus herself? Ah, that's great. That is amazing. And of course, Krampus being who he is, he has presence. You have Krampus presence here, which is going to do very bad things. But it looks like you can find Santa presence as well, which will give you various boosts and other benefits, which can never go wrong anyway. Uh, present tokens that are around the board, your dark powers. This actually comes with an epic uh, dark power and the epic finale. That's really cool how you just, so you're just getting everything. You would get everything you would expect to get in a standard feature film, uh, just all at once right here with this special one. And you get to have a holiday edition in order to play. And again, it's possible. It's very, very possible, hopefully in theory, that it'll be out Yes, this Christmas, 2023. Uh, every one of the bigger boxes, like the big, the big, big boxes that I showed off in the beginning, have a special box to them that have either a lot of figures in it, special figures. Uh, the box of props had like uh, different dice and everything in it and whatnot. Series three comes with the special effects crate. And generally what's in this are, you're gonna get a dice tray, which I am happy with. Please give me, I want it very much so. Uh, the uh, supplemental game mat. You would actually unroll this and put this next to your standard game mat that you would have from season one or season two, it doesn't matter. And it just gives you a few extra spaces for stuff. Uh, cards that uh, would add to your marketplace uh, that weren't in the original, you know, they come in from whatever feature film you have, places to place dice, places to place characters, another way to, to uh, just remind you what the steps of things are, uh, your hand, so you can put that to the side as opposed to somewhere else. It's, it's I probably won't ever use this at all, but it is really nice for people that kind of get confused about where stuff goes on the table. It's a good way of like just having that extra space of knowing, all right, that goes here. What's really cool is the tier dice. This is gonna be a brand new mechanic that you can put into your game that from what I'm seeing makes it easier um, or at least diminishes the challenge a little bit. Normally when you roll your dice, if you roll a one or a two, it is a straight out miss. You get absolutely nothing out of it and usually something bad happens. A three and a four, um, you know, you're able to, uh, what is it, uh, trade in cards to make successes, and then of course fives and sixes are your successes. For the tier dice, you would replace your red dice with these blue ones right here, and on the one and the two is a tier symbol. If you roll the dice and it is a straight miss result, you can then move your tier marker 
up the gauge here equal to the amount of tiers that you've uh, earned to the max of five. And then on your turn, you can reduce that tier marker down, gaining one of the benefits over here. So I can see um, adding this to the game just to make it a little more fun. Not that I don't, I don't think this would really reduce the challenge by that that much. It just gives you another possibility to turn the tide to your favor because this game can be super swingy in a moment's notice. You can immediately like all your hard work could just go flying out the window and the tears that you shed can now help you instead of just wanting you to roll up into a corner and say, hey, come get me. I'm good. Let's go. As far as pledge levels are concerned, you can go a la carte on series three, buying whatever feature films you want. Uh, you can just grab all the feature films in one shot. Uh, you can grab the feature films and the minis, or you can do the ultimate box, which is again what I showed you where it has uh, everything slapped into it. Uh, I had the two boxes in front of me. Of course, I'm gonna get this one because I love the cover art on these. I love how it all fits together. It fits very nicely into a Calyx cube. So that's awesome how they did that. Uh, that is a premium thing as well. This is important because there's gonna be stretch goals I talk about in a moment that have an S or a P next to them. Basically, if it has an S on it, all premium and standards will get it. If it has an S on it, then uh, if it has a P on it, then only premiums will get that thing. So if you want the most out of your stretch goals, of course you want them premium. And then of course, if you have absolutely nothing at all, you can literally get everything. And I don't think that they're doing separate shipping on this like they did with uh, when they did series two. You get it all at once, or you just you just gotta wait. That's really what it comes down to. Here we go, stretch goals. 300K was funded. Uh, 400K is that lore book, so there you go. It's already unlocked. We know that we're getting it. Uh, Paula was a special final girl from uh, series one, if I'm not mistaken. People have been dying for her to have a secret card and uh, a figure, so at the 500K, if you are a standard, you're gonna get the special uh, secret envelope. If you do premium, not only do you get the envelope, but you also get a premium figure for her. So that is awesome. Uh, here's the epic finale cards for all of the uh, characters. As I said, that was going to be, that's already unlocked. So <laughs> we knew those were gonna be there. Uh, 700K gives Agnes. Um, so we get a mini, mini figure for her and her envelope. Uh, 800,000 is the feature film rule book and achievement guides. Everyone liked these things from before. Again, this is just part for the course of stuff that we've seen series one and series two release. So as stuff comes up, be like, all right, good, we're getting that, good, we're getting that, we're good, we're getting that. That's what we like checking off one by one. The 900K is the uh, reduction from the Krampus, the North Pole one from 15 to 10. And there it is, 1 million. 1 million to tell me what the vignette is. We're so close to that million that uh, I just want to know, I want to know, what is it, what is it, what is it? And as for additional add-ons, you can get the Series 2 uh, Gruesome Death book. I have a physical copy for Series 1. I've actually put this in as well. I'm going to get a physical copy for Series 2. This, these are all online. You can get a PDF of them online and go from there. But I like having the physical book as well. I don't know, it's really cool. Uh, the mystery boxes that always came with some really cool stuff from Series 1 and Series 2. I did a little short about the Series 2 one. But Series 3 is double the price and twice as big. People are predicting that this is going to be a, uh, a hidden dice tower in it. And if that's the case, man, uh, you're already doing it, but shut up and take my money, please. That's amazing. Uh, you can buy a core box, a straight up core box, which is what you need no matter what in order to play the game. Um, and then you can also get either the ultimate box from series one or the ultimate box from series two. I'm pretty sure these are not going to be available a la carte. Like you just can't buy any one uh, particular feature film from series one or series two. They're kind of leaving that to like their retail uh, side and everything. So you got to go to your friendly local game store in order to find them, uh, go online in order to find that as well. And finally, shipping. Shipping has gone down quite a bit compared to everything that I've seen before, but because these are so huge and so uh, heavy, uh, this is, it's, they're really high. Very hard to see a lot of these. Go on over to the website itself in order to be able to really zoom in on your country to see where your uh, shipping cost lies and everything. And some of them are gonna get a pretty big, but uh, that's just kind of how it is, unfortunately. Shipping, shipping is what it is, unfortunately, everyone. Uh, it's not going away anytime soon. It's not probably going down anytime soon. And I think that's really it. You got some awesome videos. One of the best uh, how to plays uh, ever for the game. There's Paula with her character. You're getting a mini. <laughs> uh, some more playthroughs. Uh, AJ showing off uh, his, uh, his box and some awesome stuff that way. Hey, if you want to put my uh, <laughs> playthrough on here, Van Ryder Games, by all means, go ahead. That would be absolutely awesome. 
I'm gonna leave my ending on don't make a sound here just to kind of emphasize how much I want this one. But there you go, everyone. These are the reasons why I backed Final Girl Series 3. And I'm gonna be honest with you, there was really no question in my mind about it. I am backer 86, which <laughs> many of you don't really care what number backer you are, just as long as you are a backer or it's just whenever you feel like getting in there. But I'd never been below 100 in terms of like what number backer I was. And as soon as this went live, I'm sitting there like refreshing my phone and everything. As soon as it went live, I'm like, click, click, click. Where's my pledge? That's my pledge. Good, in, 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 done. All right, fine. I can always go back in and change it later. But now I'm gonna jump it over to you guys. Let me know what you think of Final Girl Series 3. Are you backing this right now? Is this something that you were very excited for, that you went right all in for? Uh, are you skipping this all together because you're not interested in any of these? Or maybe it's just not your cup of tea, which in that case, Thank you for watching this video this far, if this is really not your cup of tea. I uh, very much appreciate it, but I'd like to know why. I'm actually curious on what you don't like about it. Usually it's they don't like dice mitigation, they don't like solo play, but there could be other reasons as well, and I'd really like to know that. October's coming up really soon, and I'd like to jump back in the Final Girl for that month. So be sure to keep an eye on the Home Gamer Dad community page in order to check out the poll that I'll be putting up there eventually in order to get your opinion about which one of the Series 2 killers I should go up against. I have Big Bad Wolf, Nurse Ratchet, uh, the Intruders, and then the Thing-inspired organism stuff. So I already did the Exomorph, the Alien-inspired one, so I have those other four to do, and then the vignette would be after I finished everything else. That means so you don't miss any future Final Girl actions, be sure that you are subscribed to the Home Gamer Dad, so this way you can see those or any other fun videos that I happen to put out. If you wish to support the channel even further, a super thanks will always be appreciated. You guys would be absolutely amazing with that. Or you can head on over to patreon.com slash homegamerdad, check out the tiers over there, and possibly join the growing Patreon family. All Everything that comes in along these ways and whatnot just goes right back into the channel in order to get better equipment, in order to get games for you guys to play and everything, you know, for me to show you and whatnot. And then, of course, just to make things better for everyone because I love doing this. This is absolutely amazing. And I love each and every one of you. Heck, your view, your like, your comment, your share, if you just do any of those, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Seriously, I, I amazing. Thank you. As always, you have been great. Take care of yourselves and each other. We are family forever, gaming together. Until next time, you guys have been awesome, and I will see you for the next project that I back. Later.